All right, we're live. Hey, everyone. Uh, ben here. I'm here with a special guest, Gary Matthews. Gary, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, really exciting session tonight. Well, for a couple of reasons. One, this is the first time I have a physical human being in the office with me. Usually when we do these every month, we have a special guest, a fellow whiskey expert. We'll have you know somebody do it on this Google Hangout. Pretty cool to have somebody here live. Uh, Gary is in the Chicago local, uh, such as myself. Gary's from the critically acclaimed. <laughs> well, you can tell me, you tell him about it. Because last time I said something about the accomplishments and the accolades of Drumbar, you got a little modest on me. I don't know. I'm the, I'm the beverage director um, at Drum Bar in the Raffaello Hotel um, here in Chicago. Um, I've worked there for about four and a half years, um, and we're a you know a whiskey lounge slash cocktail lounge on the rooftop of a luxury boutique hotel overlooking Chicago's uh, Gold Coast. So basically, that was a really fancy way of saying Gary has an awesome bar in Chicago. Yes, it, it's one of my favorites. He's an incredible mixologist, and it's one of the few bars actually in America to actually serve. Uh, Scotch Whiskey Society, Whiskey by the Dram. So you don't have to be a member to go in, to Drum Bar. You don't have to be a member, I should say, of the Scotch Whiskey Society to go and actually taste the whiskey. Right. They have a small selection. You can actually go in there. And so we were just talking, you know, we do these every month, as you guys know, um, and it's a lot of people have loved and just share the feedback that they love bringing different people who don't do these every month, such as myself, to kind of share some opinions. And I thought it would be cool. This is the first time we've had someone, actually, who, such as this is yourself, who is a professional whiskey taster. I mean, you can say you're, you're creating, but you are tasting, right? Every, every, all the time. Just oh, yeah. Time. I mean, I tasted some stuff earlier today. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a big part of the job. Obviously, when you're making cocktails, you're constantly R&Ding and checking flavor profiles. And the same with whiskey, too. You know, curating a bar program and a whiskey program takes a lot of work. And there's always, you know, lots of things to taste through. So a couple of things. Just want to say hi to some people. Tom R., good to see you. Tom R. is another Chicago one. Wow, this is a Chicago scene. Uh, Fight for Sound, nice to see you. I'm not sure I saw you. I've seen you around here before, but great to have you. Whiskey Throttle, hello. Great to see you as always. Um, tell, real quick, Gary. So, what what do you when it comes to whiskey? What what are you into in general? What what do you enjoy? Like my personal preferences. Yes, personally. I mean, totally unbiased. Just um, what, what do you enjoy at the moment? You know, I think it really runs the gamut. A lot of what I like in whiskey just kind of depends on my mood, um, which is the same way like I approach food. You know, I sort of like everything. Everything has its own you know time and place which you might think it's delicious. Um, but to get more specific, um, I really like things that have really unique barrel finishes, you know, things that are, you know, finished in sherry or sauterne. I um, also love, you know, peat scotch from Isla as well as everyone does. So we have, okay, holiday season, as you guys know, I think we're in the thick of whiskey season, personally. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I drink whiskey all year long, but this is for me, I think the time that's most exciting, just cause I don't know, it's cold. It was the warming characteristics of whiskey just makes it, I think, that much more enjoyable. Um, so what we've done, so as you guys know, and I believe I put this in the caption below, but we're releasing the December 2018 upturn for society members here in the U.S. tomorrow. So at this moment, we're actually doing a series of tasting events around the country. Uh, Jenna, who you all know pretty well, is up in Seattle right now doing this tasting, and I'm here in an office. Uh, but I'm actually going to Miami tomorrow. We're doing another just event uh, surrounding the launch of these whiskeys. So this is the first time I think anybody will actually taste these and really in the, in the well, I, I take that back. We did one earlier. We did one the other day. Oh. Actually, okay, so we're the second. Oh, okay, we're the second. <laughs> you oh, try to try to get in. You wrote me in by saying we're the first ones, but you know, that's okay. So this month we have, you know, it's crazy. We the society's grown could have been in the United States, and I keep hammering this um whiskey bottle for no real reason, but We've grown quite a bit in the U.S. and it used to be just a few years ago. Every month we would release like three to four different whiskeys, and mm -hmm. it was a pretty cool thing. And it's easy to choose at that point, but we try to do a you know diverse selection of different profiles. But now we're up to about twenty to twenty-five different spirits, I think, throughout the course of the month. So we got a lot coming out tomorrow. I've handpicked five from the selection, five five whiskeys that I think are we're all very different from one another, and I think pretty unique to things we've seen. So uh, with that said, let's uh, let's kick it off. But real quick, let's do it. just want to say hi to a couple more people. Chris G, good to see you. Uh, Eric, hello from California. Eric, I just came back from California actually a few hours ago. I was out in San Diego for a wedding. Uh, first time out there. And I'm leaving for Miami in the morning and like freezing my ass off right now. But uh, George, good to see you. Good to see you as always. So let's kick, kick it off. So first one, guys. And after this, I'll put, you know, I put the descriptions below, as you can see, in the video itself. 
First time I've done that, I've listed them all out so you can follow along a bit easier. First whiskey we're we'll be trying is Cask 36.152, called a well perfumed weed brute. So, Gary, what is your thought of the name of that whiskey? Well, the first thing I thought of was just maybe they had someone in mind for that. I was sort of joking with you. We were joking on Instagram earlier, right before this. So that, I wonder if that was an actual person on the tasting panel, and they were just that's sort of an inside joke that we don't know about. I think Gary's implying that he is the well perfumed weed brew. Or, anyway, or it could just be me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, about this whiskey, a well perfumed weed brew, interesting one. And I think why I chose this one of the five out of the whole selection was this so this is 11 year old space side whiskey still in the 16th of march 2007 and it's mature in the first fill sherry but ex oloroso sherry so but what's interesting right away and we'll just tell you all these whiskeys as you know are naturally colored this is a very very light very light finish i'm sorry i should say sorry very light color mm -hmm. for a full term in a sherry but oh yeah so you know on the nose it's classic sherry for me it's those rich dried fruits. It's not as dark and spicy, if, if you will. There's a lot of like a nutty sweetness on the surface for me, but it's a, a bit of an enigma for a sherry mature whiskey. What do you think? You know, I, was, I was definitely picked up on the on the richness and, and then the sort of the nuttiness of seeing hazelnut. This calls something very specific, but yeah, classic sherry um, nose on that for sure. Jesse, good to see you. Uh, enjoy your chat with Roy. Oh, thanks for tuning in, Jesse. Jesse is a new society member. Met Jesse at the Scotch Touch Dutton's anniversary down in Wichita. Uh, Don Ruger, good to see you as well. Don Ruger is a, another new society member. Uh, we missed the tasting today since we got so on the East Coast. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Um, yeah, okay, we'll see throttle. What's the number again? So this is 36.152. I'll hold it up right there. Um, and so down below in the description, you'll see actually listed them in the order we'll be tasting them. So the first one, 36152. Mm. So 11 years old, I should mention 58.9% ABV. All these whiskeys are, of course, straight from the cast, they're cast strength. So this is as is. And I have this little water dropper. Where is this thing? Oh, I should give a shout out. That is to, a fancy water dropper. This is a, sorry, <laughs> Scotch <laughs> Test Dummies. Uh, Scotch for, Test Dummies? Yeah, you got to get on the whole thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. So Gary is working on a social I, media I'm game. Sorry. He's got these whiskey tubers. You know, you can unite and bring them in. But this <laughs> is a fancy little angel's share, like walk over thing. So the way it works. I like it. I'm going to taste this neat, but you basically just hold this thing on the side. Love it. I mean, basic physics. So Love it. I'm not going to leave this in the middle of the screen. But, um, so right away, 11 years old, very bright, very lively. What do you, I mean, what do you think? What's your favorite Do you taste it yet? I haven't tasted it yet. Just been nosing it. It's a, I think it's a pretty seasonally appropriate <laughs> cold December. It's, but again, it's not that full on. Yeah, it's not like it's not, it doesn't have like it's not like fully like caramelized yeah. like richness to it. It has like sort of just like a hint of like. It's, it's like it's like a, you know it's like a sherry barrel, but the sherry barrel is like over around the corner. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, really? That's really different. There's like a plum, like there's like a, like mm. a fruitiness right, right in the mid palate. But sometimes too. It's a little more tannin than I expected. Yeah, that is okay. It's like, grippy. Yeah, almost now drying out too. Mm -hmm. oh. So, I should mention, I, I did taste these briefly today when I first opened the bottle. And every time with cast strength whiskey, when you just open the bottle, I always say to wait a day or two yeah. at least for the whiskey to really just open up and breathe for a bit. So a lot of times cast drink whiskey can be really compact and intense, um, which is a good and bad thing. And in a lot of ways, it's some, for some whiskeys, I think are better when, when they start. But a lot of these whiskeys, in my opinion, really just improve over a couple of days. So this one is really intense. I can, I can kind of sense where it's going to be going a little bit in the next couple of days. But uh, wow, it, it's, a, it's just different. It's different for a sure mature whiskey for me. I like it though. Um, I'm interesting to taste it with like maybe a drop of water here after a couple. Jesse says, I can't believe that 2995 said so. Yeah, we, we did release this this week. We had a what special release. Um, three whiskeys from Distillery 24. We don't really name the distilleries, we give them a little sure. code. Um, it's sold out in just a few minutes. Um, you can probably guess the distillery of origin from <laughs> Scotland. That, is pretty popular. So, but but nonetheless, we took one just just a, for Jesse's point. We took one big sherry punch in and we transferred the contents into three different casks 
first fill Oloroso, first fill PX. Oh, you need to raise them separately. Oh, that's a nice, so, interesting so project. So finish, finish them for two, two, 20 years old and two more years in those other casts and then sold it as a set of three for members to taste and really kind of just explore the, the impact of wood and the different types of wood and the same origin of the spirit. So anyway, getting off topic, but yeah, it was an amazing set. So, so it's whiskey and, and educational exercise for the lucky few who purchased. Yeah, I mean, like that's that's kind of what we're all about. We, we no, that's cool though. Secure, I, mean, I think it's though. interesting. Um, Eric says, Gary, most of us whiskey tubers are survivors of alcoholics. Now, oh, that was to your point of not knowing these, this, this epic community that has a whiskey tube. Um, so anyway, Ben, I will hit up the drum bar when someone is buying me drinks. I'm just a poor engineer with a taste for expensive spirits. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't really know where to go there, Tom, but... Uh, what are you engineering? Most, most, yeah, what are you engineering? I mean, we got to talk about that first. Yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's move on, though. I'm going to add a drop of water to this. Again, yeah. we're tasting 36152. May, may I use, yeah, may I use just, this? Dig in. Um, overall, I think just my real first impression of this whiskey, okay. it's very different for sure. Sure. Whiskey. If you're looking at it on paper, I think this is a, this is a good exercise to just open up and, and unearth this spirit, if you will. If you were, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Wow, I've never had someone else do this for me before. Oh, yeah, it's this, nice. is, this is amazing. I just want like wow. one tiny one. This is one. so much better than Google Hangouts. Oh, this is so bad. I'm bad at, right. bad at this. Okay, I'm going to take over here. This oh, is, sorry. This, I'm going to add a lot. User error. Yeah, it was, it was a very generous thing. I'm used to straws. I. Yeah, well, you're behind the bar. I'm going to get one of these things, except for this would not last. Or, no, someone would steal that for sure. Um, oh, with some water. That's really good. I mean, the nose has already changed. Significantly, an right? improvement too. It's, we just, it's a bit more round. Yeah. I would say that nutty, wow, that nuttiness is like has like a little more of a rich caramel to it, almost like a, I want to say buttery, but almost like a brown butter sort of aroma. Eric says, does the SMWS ever do whiskey events such as Whiskey Fest or Whiskeys of the World in San Jose or San Francisco? Mm. Yeah, we do uh, participate in, in a few whiskey festivals. The Extravaganza has been one. Uh, not the Whiskey Fest, but Whiskey X is one we've done around the country, too. I'm actually doing the uh, Whiskey Extravaganza down in Florida on Thursday. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, not those those two. The Whiskey's of the World are Whiskey Fest in San Jose or San Francisco, but um, but we will be up there soon, Erica. Okay, move on. Overall, what what do you think of it? Has it op has it opened up with the water? Significantly better. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's like it rounded it out. On paper, it's a sherry bomb, but really to me, it's so different. It's so much lighter. Um, and apologies for the noise in the background. We have our uh, the library is getting cleaned. <laughs> The, the cleaning crew, the, they're so kind of here, and they're always they always walk by when we do these. Someone's got to dust the bottles around the corners. So. And always, let, yeah, we're here just <laughs> drinking whiskey. They always wonder who are these guys in there. Uh, let's move on. So next one, I'm pretty excited about. Again, that was thirty six one five two. Let's go on to this one. So this is a unique one. Seventy seven point four seven. Delicatessen's in old libraries. I'll hold this up just so you guys can see the bottle. And the reason that I chose this one. To feature here is because I think it's just a bit unique. 77 mm -hmm. is from a distillery we haven't seen, I want to say, all year. And here we are at the end of it. First time I've seen Personalized Society cast from this distillery, number 77. This is a double matured whiskey. So this is 10 years old. It's spent the first nine years of its life in American Oak, ex Bourbon Hawkshead, and then transferred into a second fill French Oak wine break. So one year of red wine finishing on top of nine years of bourbon wood maturation, classic, classic whiskey, 59.2% delicatessens in old libraries. One, and this is just interesting, one of two 15 bottles total in the world. Small amount. You know, so yeah, very, very small yield but for a hogshead. Hmm. So I love, well, okay. I'll let to, you go first. To say the nose on this is really intoxicating. It's really good. Yeah. You know, I'd say, you know, compared to the first one, so this one has a bit more richness to it. Yeah. You know, if you were to think the first one is more light body, this is approaching more medium body. Yeah. Not, not all the way full as far as like a nose goes, but more medium. It's got those classic space side orchard mm. fruit notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that red wine, 
I, I can't quite pick it up on the nose. Like if you hand this to me, I would say maybe a bit of sherry influence. It doesn't have sure. a classic tannic wine wine note on the nose. That's just that I think if I was tasting this blind, I probably would not pick that up. You know, it's a nose though that like makes you want to drink it. Yeah, I know that's really <laughs> like a, a, maybe just like a really silly way to put it, but you know, it's, it smells so delicious, and the, the orchard fruit definitely comes out, and it just kind of makes you want to dig into the glass with your palate. Oh, yeah. Beautiful color on it too. Gold, yeah. yeah, it's like a golden, like a golden apple. I'm just gonna color to it. I'm just gonna call this out. Of all the artificially colored whiskeys on the market, when they when they wow. add caramel coloring, it almost looks like this color. <laughs> this is what they're what coming for. Sorry, I don't mean to get any money, but this yeah. is like a very unique color within whiskey. It seems like it's so common, but this is uh... honey, honey, honey. This is that moment when I realized we're just drinking on YouTube. Yeah, it's all right. Just a lot I love this one. Okay, so I love this whiskey. I'm just gonna call out 77.47. What I love about it, okay, so the French oak to me, it's tannic. It is spicy. It's on the palate. It wasn't there on the nose. I thought it was probably like PX sherry for me. Um, Definitely spicy. Oh, that spice really comes in. What starts off, and I like it because what starts off as such a classic space side, malt whiskey, fruity, a lot of depth there really kind of becomes an aggressive well perfumed weed brute. I'm kidding about the well perfumed weed brute. <laughs> it become it becomes something else. There is like I love the roller coaster. What do you think? I think that's a good way to describe it. It definitely is sort of like feels like a little bit of a ride, you know, you know, from the nose and, and the, the spiciness at the end, um, I think it's really intriguing. Yeah, so I'm gonna add water to this one because I, I think mm. more than anything, this, you know, we've only had two tonight. I mean to start we have more to come. But I think this is a type of whiskey that I think it was just open a few hours ago. It will benefit from having a few drams and just some time to breathe because that spiciness is really, really intense. And I don't know if that's something that's going to stick around forever. It's a lot of flavor packed in here, you know? Yeah. I'm just catching up. Then when you plug the SMWS advent calendar, yeah, you know, we didn't, we weren't able to bring over the advent calendar in the US, you know, which is, very, very common around the holidays with other whiskey um, companies providing these. And so we did it in the UK this year, and then next year we're looking, hopefully if all goes well, to, to bring those as well, so that you can try a different society crown every night. Or you can just buy 30 bottles, and I think that would be uh, You know, really, I'm like tasting this now like a second and third time. That spiciness really subsided a lot. Did you have one? Or I didn't. No. I, yeah. So initially it was pretty intense. Oh, hey, Jenna. Jenna's you should try that one and then go back to this one without the water. <laughs> well, see, it's different. I mean, it's significantly different. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm making the, the face because this is very, yes. very convenient. I'm usually by myself doing this. Thing. Yeah. You do, do you do it in the mirror to practice, like for you too? You know what? I think I prefer me. Yeah, that's why I was hesitant. I wanted to see what you what you thought. I didn't want to do mine. I don't think I don't think the um, so the, I don't think that the spiciness really subsided with adding water. I think it took away from the initial like the nose right away. That's what was neat. It was so packed full of flavor, mm -hmm. or which is the aromatics. But um, I'll probably keep it neat. Oh, this is delicious. Yeah, I think definitely yeah. people should definitely pick that up. So I'm just gonna you know before people ask me. 77.47, yeah. so 77.47, oh, 105, this is 105, wow, okay, first one for reference, the, oh wait, wow, they're both 105, okay, the first two were both 105, which I'm pretty excited about, because that's kind of that, within the way we press our casks, it's, we focus on really kind of just unique casks and, and things of, basically when we, when we choose them, it's, price isn't a factor, it's just the quality of the whiskey, yeah. but I'm excited, this is kind of on the lower end of our, you know, our range so this, is, this, this is well worth it yeah i think it's a no-brainer let's see here okay a couple questions ben is there any state that has an exclusive retail store you know we don't sell in stores i mean really the only way to experience the whiskey is to purchase either by calling us over the phone we ship it directly of course we're going on our website or going to places like trump bar yeah. bar 
and they have some whiskeys. And I think what's cool about that, just with the few bars that have our whiskey around the country, um, you know, now our whiskey, when we, we, we bring it out every month, or I should say more than once a month now, every week we have something new coming out. And by the time I think you get the whiskey, it's likely sold out, you know, from, from our site now. Some of yeah. them often. So it's, it's a really cool opportunity to go to these bars and sometimes cover whiskeys that you may have had once before, you, you fell in love with, but can't get anymore. You can go back and revisit. Um, yeah, I mean, you had those old ones too, and we we're just there. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely had some yeah. some ones from a few years ago back that were still hanging around, but you know, they're, I mean, I mean, there's you make so little of this stuff, you know, like yeah. this is one of two hundred and fifteen <laughs> bottles in the world, in and world. you know, yeah. if you if you just joined maybe like in the past couple of months or even like the past year, um, going to a bar that you know carries this, you can keep, definitely see some of the stuff from the back catalog that you're not going to find probably anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of going to the library in Scotland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, of course. And so, I mean, you can go to the vaults, or yeah. as Tom says, can vaults, he just I come? Guess. Can he just come to this room for thirty days and have a sample dram, presumably every night for that? But yeah, probably so. Uh, yes, Tom, I'm I'm extending the invite. I have a bit of travel coming up this month, but uh, you should come by here. All right. So let's move on. This is seventy-seven point four seven. We haven't gone through the rest of them yet, but I just think this is a knockout, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I just love, I love that it's so familiar at the start, and then it really kind of goes in a different direction on the palate, and um, a lot of fun, if you will. And I, I'm excited to see how this evolves over the next couple of days. Okay. But the next one, I just want to catch up on some comments. Um, people are talking about listening to this stream when they just drive home. That's, Tom, that's, that's really impressive. Um, Yes, we can discuss for dummies. Gave me a sample of 3.305, the sense of perfection, which I'll be reviewing soon. Eric, can't wait to, to hear that. That's actually one of my favorite society whiskeys, I think. Not to get off topic, but it's right here. Um, one best cast strength scotch whiskey at the this year's International World Spirits Competition, which, you know, I, it's exciting when you're when you're a small company and, and you and you bottle the whiskey in such a rare there are only so many bottles in the world, but um, Looking forward to hear what you, what you what you think of it, Eric. So, next one, you ready? Absolutely. Nine point one five five, which is night. So, twenty two year old space side, also double matured. So we're we're on. This is the second. I think it's the only the only two double matured whiskeys of the night. This is twenty two years old. Spent most of its life in an ex bourbon hogshead, and then we transferred it to first fill Pia Sherry. So Pedro Jimenez Sherry, if you guys don't know. On this sherry is, is a fortified wine that's as diverse yeah, yeah. in flavors as all wine and self, I would say, from the very light and dry fino to Pedro Jimenez and this very sticky, sweet, intoxicatingly sweet yeah. sherry. Raisiny. Raisiny, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So this is the heavily sweet sherry as cast as a finish on this one. 22 years old, bullet 58.1%. You can give this one. Off. And you definitely get the color. You know, from the PX, I don't know how long they it's finished in there. About, a, about a year. Probably about a year. Yeah. yeah. So a bit darker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So in the nose, right out of the way, you know, you get some of those deeper, you know, more richer fruits from the PX cherry. Well, I think this is definitely a whiskey that shows its age right away. I mean, oh yeah. We've gone from was it ten years old to twenty two right away. The first one was eleven. It was eleven and then ten, and this one's twenty two. The PX is there right away. I mean, it's sweet. Because it's definitely a cold uh, weather, you know. This is like, you know, we're in Chicago right now where it's it's definitely chilly, and this is exactly what you want to be smelling yeah, up with. That's sherry, that, because sh oh, it's so warming. It's not, I mean, PX sherry is very different from Oloroso sherry, which is mm -hmm. most, most whiskey that's been turned into sherry is Oloroso sherry. It's that dry, spicy, nutty sort of uh, character. PX sherry is very sticky, sweet. Very, very sweet. I think you call it raisiny. Yeah. It's a different type of like warming sensation, if you will, where to go there. But it feels more concentrated, yeah, you know, yeah, than, yeah. than Oloroso sherry does. Do you drink sherry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. big fan of sherry, use it in yeah. cocktails quite a bit. Do you have one on the menu with sherry right now? You know I that? almost always have at least one cocktail yeah. sherry on the so menu. While we're, while we're kind of becoming familiar with this, tell about some of the couple you enjoy when it comes to making cocktails and how you use whiskey. I don't know, just for. Um, so, my, yeah, so, so the cocktails. Um, you know, I have, I have a culinary background, so I sort of borrow from that and a lot of my flavor profiles. I sort of approach it like, you know, like maybe like a chef would of making like a new dish. 
And so I started with like, I might start off with like a whiskey, you know, and I sort of just taste the whiskey and I'm like, all right, what does, what's it like a flavor in this whiskey that sort of like maybe not say it takes over, but just like, what's the first thing that comes to my mind? You know, it could be vanilla, it could be orange. And I think, all right, you know, maybe I want to do like something like an old fashioned. I'm like, it tastes kind of like vanilla and orange. What flavors go with that? And so I sort of just like make a base flavor, have a base flavor profile and then sort of build it out and complement it from there. Yeah, I think when I go to drum bar, like when we first met, is that too nerdy? No, no, no. This is a Scotch Hall Whiskey Society. It's true. Like, that's what, true. That's true. I mean, that's true. This is already very nerdy. Why do you think you're here? Dude? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no. no. I, I think I think you guys would appreciate this because you know when we have so for me like when members call, taste this. Uh, yeah, enjoy it, please. Over the sound of my voice, I know it's hard sometimes to discern a whiskey when oh, I'm talking, wow. but um, you know when members call in, you know. And they say, hey, do you have any recommendations? It's always, we start, I start with, like, what do you enjoy, first of all? And kind of work from there. And so when I sit down at drum bar, and you're saying, what are you feeling? And you're amazing at, you know, I'll just say, hey, I'm thinking something light and refreshing. Or I'll just name a random food or some sort of flavor. You'll just build something off of that. Of course, all your cocktails on the menu, you created those as well. Yeah. But I like just the flexibility of just kind of deviating away from that. Well, it's fun, too. It's like, you know, you can drink cocktails like you might, like you might drink whiskey, you know, a lot of it just depends on mood and state of mind you're in. You know, most, you know, especially people who, you know, a member of <laughs> in the Scotch yeah. Society, then probably a pretty wide variety of tastes they like, you know, anything from, you know, like something like, you know, a big sherry bomb or something from Isla or something that's maybe just light and citrusy. Um, cocktails the same way, you know, like there's room for a margarita and there's room for a Manhattan, you know, you can have yeah. both of them. This is, again, so... For those of you guys who are just tuning in, this what, is what do you think of this? This is nine point one five five. So let me go back. I, mean, I was talking a lot right away. Old, I think, and I'll just put this out there. Oldest whiskey that we have on the docket for this evening. Right away, tastes every bit of its, its age. My mm -hmm. first, my first impression on the nose, and this is the kind of whiskey I think these PX sure these wine cask matured or finished whiskeys are exactly the types of whiskeys that I think improve once they've been opened. And, and I don't, I don't mean to keep saying that, but I, I'm saying that because you know. That's so a, good point. a lot of you guys are looking for recommendations. They need a little, they need a little, little, little air tone. Yeah. So as we kind of share our tasting notes and our opinions of them, just be mindful of when you get, get a bottle, order one for yourself, open it up. If you don't get that same experience, well, one, first of all, every palate's different, but two, some of these really do evolve in time. So this one I love right away. I think that it's very old and mellow on the nose. On the palate, it's like wide awake. It, yeah. It's a lively whiskey. I mean, this is. 58.1%. I mean, it's all 22 years at full intensity, um, but really drying for me on the palate. Is it drying? Like, like, drying it's, it's yeah. like, like sucks your. And I don't think it has the same tannin structure as the last one. And also, I think that I think it's just from the difference in barrels. Um, on the previous whiskey, the tannins were really like at the tip of your tongue. Mm -hmm. These ones are really more along the side. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So the question is, what is the price of this one? So this one is priced at two ten. So I believe, yeah, within that, that's kind of the highest, oldest in age, and I mean, a lot, a lot of things that factor in price, of course, the rarity, the cast, and the age of, of of it as well, not what we pay for it to begin with. I mean, the we PX Sherry from this one because it's a bit more rich, yeah, than the previous. Really good job. I think this is an easy one to love. If you're in a whiskey, it's easy to appreciate it. If you want something special. Um, I think the price just obviously it's come to some bias. I mean, what do you think just as a consumer for a twenty-two-year-old cast strength finish? Yeah, because I mean, I think it's. I mean, I mean, you. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's really delicious. It's definitely a whiskey that shows its age, um, in like the best possible way. Yeah. It's very mature. It's comfortable. It's confident. Compared to the one we had before, which is the mm. delicatessens and old libraries. The ten-year-old with, with French wine. Sit. Oh wow! That, I'm just cutting myself off here because that finish is really drying. Mm -hmm. It's really oaky. Okay. But um, compared to the, two, the first one, it's it's much more playful. It's very lively. Um, this one's older, more serious. It's more serious. You know, it's like butt on your top, butt on Gary. Like we're drinking this, which is <laughs> you know, like here we go. Like if I'm if I'm we're, the, we're going for it. If I'm the delicate contestants in old libraries, you know, you are the that we just had, which is nice. The name doesn't really apply to this, but it's a serious whiskey. Oh, probably a good Christmas gift. 
Yeah, I was gonna say these would this would make a good gift for someone for sure. I mean, I think I think some of these that we'll go through are, are you know, we'll kind of recircle back on that. But I think this is one that I think everybody can really love. So if you're like whiskey, it's something you can appreciate quite easily. I think uh, like for this one too, it's it has a lot of like for people who are maybe especially if it's a gift and they like they like Scotch whiskey, but they don't necessarily know a ton about it. This is gonna taste exactly what they think like an older whiskey should taste yeah, like. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think great value too. One of two of four mm, in the world, yeah. so we got a lot less than that in the United States. So there are very few of them coming out tomorrow, which is night. Don't know where the name came from, which is night, but there's probably some answer that I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna probably get a text message within the next ten minutes. Then, which is night is a, a British holiday. Have, have you idiot. have have you have you better been able to you know find a way to name anything? You know, like they have such fun, playful names, like. We did name something, actually. So, we named. Was this a Amber Waves? Yeah, yeah. You, you know about this one. Yeah. So this was, I believe, I'm pretty sure this is all sold out now, we just sold out of it, but uh, we double check, this might be available, but I haven't checked in a couple days, but 46.63 Amber Waves of Grain to celebrate our 25th anniversary, and I've told this story before, but uh, my colleague, Brianna, a lot of you, you may know right? Brianna, if you, if you remember, she call in to our uh, hotline. Uh, Brianna named this Amber Waves of Grain. I submitted an idea of a name and it was rejected pretty quickly. Well, what was it? I don't remember. It was like oh, my first on. day on the job and I was like, whoa. I never thought I'd actually get to name a whiskey. You know, and it was day one. And I just wanted to. You're like, like, day one, I'm naming whiskeys here. Like, yeah, it was a very kind of like politically correct, not politically correct, but just kind of like a, it fits in too well. And, and Brianna just took the liberty of saying, I'm going to come up with something really great. Amber Waves of Grain is good. It's a classic. Yeah. Um, let's move on. So, okay. So, we've had three whiskeys so far. Full one. I'm pretty excited about this. So from the Isle of Mull, 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 or Mule, three potential pronunciations of said island um, in the Western Hebrides. But this is Lunch at the Lighthouse, 42.36. I'll hold it up right here. Do you know where that island is, is geographically? So on, so on the west on the west coast. Okay. So it's what just south of I don't know. Someone someone correct this has to be someone from Scotland. Um, it's an island I haven't visited, but I'd love to. Very, very small in terms of whiskey production um, by volume and number of distilleries. But this is a 13-year-old at 61.9% in its second fill bourbon barrel. So this is this blue color scheme. We have these colors to, to, to suggest the different one of the 12 key flavor profiles. This blue is called oily and coastal. Yeah. And so what do you get with this? What do you think right away? I mean, I mean, it's just such a different nose and we were just yeah. you know, a big departure from where we were just at. And there's a richness to it, like, you know, oily, I think is a good way to describe it. Yeah. So not a peated whiskey, you know, a lot of, when we think of Isla whiskey, a lot of it is in fact peated, not all of it, but a lot of it is. And so a lot of times when you have an Isla whiskey, you have the, the coastal spirit and that influence, but you also have the peat. You remove that peat, you just, you're left with something that for me is a lot of brine. Yeah, seasoned. Little gauze, yeah, yeah. It's salty. It's, yeah, it's, it's got that, it's coastal is how I would describe it. And Don confirmed, oh, Amber Waves is in fact out of stock. That's too bad. What was the price on this? Oh, so the price on this one is pulled up. So 42. And sorry, guys, I usually know this right away, but these are literally coming out tomorrow. Uh, this is priced at 120. It's a 13 year old. And a second fill bourbon barrel. And I think this is just. It's beautiful on the nose. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. This might be my favorite so far? nose yeah, yeah, of, of, yeah. of the evening thus far. Oh, that's a guess. You. you went back to, I'm just the, kidding. You I, went back to the second one? or? Different. No, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I set these back down in order. I mean, I had them all lined up in order, but I don't know if I've done. And I've added some water to some, so I don't know. Um, uh, whiskey bottle. This is 42.3 cents. So, without revealing any distillery info, I will say it does get kind of confusing because from this distillery, oh, yeah, really? That's good. That's good. From this distillery, there's a peated and a non peated variant, both bearing 42. So, this is the unpeated one. 42.36 lunch at the lighthouse. Oh yeah, this is good. <laughs> Sorry. I just like how, how, how uh, I'm gonna stop talking. Sorry guys, this is, we have to take a pause and just. 
Just dig in. Just dig, I think this I think deserves a little attention. Mm. And then it's deep and complex, but like there's such like a it's lighter than its foot though, oh, you know. So good. It doesn't have like the richness of like the sherry finish, but there is a lot of richness here. I think I'd be a little bit of ash on the finish. It's not, smoke, it's not smoky, but mm -hmm. And that, by the way, this is also 61.9% ABV, too. Getting up there. So it's definitely, I mean, I quite like it neat. I There's mean, a lot of texture to it. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. So 13 years old, second mm. fill, bourbon barrel. I'm going to add a little bit of water just mm. to see how that changes the spirit. I'll go for a little bit too. Some? Yeah. There it is. More or less? Not, I think that's good. Why well, can't do less? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All too late. So I just think a beautiful spirit. Very different from anything on the table here, but also from a lot of what we see. I think it actually improves a little bit of the water for me. It brings out more of that salinity. You know, like yeah. it's, it's more. More bright. Cutting on the alcohol, yeah, it brings out that coastal influence. Oh, this is great. Mm, yeah. It's a non-cut. Oh. You know, you, like, Holy shit. the drop of water you put in was pretty large for the amount of glass, but I feel like this is almost like unfazed well, by it. It's 61, yeah, 61. <laughs> oh, but that, oh my God, that brings up this fruitiness. Yeah. Really that fruitiness nice. was not there at all. Oh. It was there, it was just packed in tight, you know? I, it's got these, the, how do I describe it? Maybe it's just the uniqueness of the spirit and the cast and the age, but it has this property that reminds me of something. It, 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 it is salty in, so, in, 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 in a way that I like. But it's got this, like, it's, it reminds me of a lot of old whiskeys, and I've had three decades, three pushing four sometimes in American oak. It's really, really unique. And you add the water, it brings up that fruitiness, and it's really just a harmonious spirit. Oh, that's so sort of fruit would you describe as that like a like an apple? Like an apple, apple, apple? apple? Like, I was gonna say apricot. Like a yellow but, apple. Like a, okay. That would such a thing to say yellow versus green. No, but but really yeah, not like fair. a not like a sweet one, but a very more more tart for me. Mm. Um oh, but if none of that makes sense, just just I just hear me out. I think it's such a beautiful whiskey. That's really I love I love how it's evolved with the water. That's that's a no brainer. It's a stunner. That's a stunner. Wow. Didn't didn't really. I was excited to try this one, but didn't think that would really just. You said you tried it briefly earlier, but it was the the shortest. They just opened the bottles. They yeah. literally were just dying for some air. Um, how many? How many were produced? So this one hundred and seventy. Yeah. That's so. That's only, low. They're only one seventy in from this cast. That's the yield. That's for that's global though. Um, yeah. Probably depending what to. Exactly, this was matured, but the high evaporation on the West Coast probably leaves the angel share, and so very few whiskeys. Um, didn't bring that many to the US either, but a decent amount. I mean, they're coming out tomorrow. So, killer. 42.36, lunch at the lighthouse. Beautiful drum. Yeah. All right. So, this is our fifth whiskey. And I didn't actually pre pour this one because it's a pewed whiskey, and sometimes when you or peated whiskey with all these other whiskeys, it can just overpower everything there. Mm -hmm. So let me put this in. So this next one, guys, is cast 53.250, which is called smoked salt orange peel. I like that. I mean, I, like drum bar. I want to eat I that. Yeah. I feel like that's a drum bar. <laughs> that's, 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 Basically, that sounds like something I would name a cocktail. So check that out. I would so, like name an old fashioned smoked salt orange peel. So right away, it's pretty much clear. Um, let's show you guys. 53.250. And this is classic Isla. But what's interesting is you can see right away this is what oh, look at that color. It's kind of like a, a light Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, very, very, there you light, go. very pale, like a white wine right there. A nice, a nice French Sancerre. That is pure Isla whiskey and American oak. Yeah. Um, 11 years old. What's interesting about this one, so we actually have. Most recently, we've had a few from Distillery 53. This is another 11 year old. And this one is actually in the full peated profile. There's this one, and I'll show you guys here. This is 
two 11 years old, two 11 year old whiskeys, both from the same cast type, both refill expert bourbon hogsheads. And just to kind of show you just how nature is wildly unpredictable. One, and we've categorized this, one is fully peated, it's this dark green color. And this is the light green, lightly peated. The malt is peated the same PPM. This is actually, I'll just tell you, it's from Port on Maltings. So they're both heavily peated whiskeys, but this one has just, the results after 11 years is a much light, lighter in terms of the smoky characteristics and much more approachable. So that's kind of the, that's the beauty of single cast whiskey, I guess. What do you think? Um, you know, I haven't really done it yet, just smelling it. Did you have this one, 53 at Drum Bar? Um, you, have a, you had a seven year old, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, st I still have it, the uh, Blowtorch Blast. Blowtorch Blast, okay. Yeah. I love that name, too. All right. Okay, never mind. Maybe I didn't have it. So, smoked salt, orange pill. Do you get any of those? Do you get orange pill? Um, I don't know if I would say orange. I'll just read this here. This is kind of fun. Rich oils. This is the one and only <laughs> label I'm going to read tonight. Rich oils from sardines sizzled in salted butter with orange skin, burning heather, and salty twang of licorice. Oh, and tart covered ropes. So don't forget the tar covered ropes. Tar, tar, tar covered ropes. It's in this one. I don't know what, what that even is. It's a tar covered rope. I don't know. Why is the rope covered in tar? There, there are, for reasons <laughs> that we will never understand, Gary. I mean, there, there is. There are all, all sorts of applications in life for tar covered ropes. You know? Like basically, they, just, they, they come from time to time. Evolution. I mean, it's like a really important, you know. Anyway, I don't know why it's called called that one. Oh, Tom R. Good question. What is the the price? Uh, oh, price okay. of this one is is one thirty for the eleven year old Isla, lightly peated. So, so a number of these are sort of on the lower end for price point for you guys. Yeah, I mean, when you have you know holiday season, we have a lot of older whiskeys too. I want to bring some out that I think you know age is just a number to a certain extent. We had sure. a twenty two year old earlier. Um, We've, we've brought in the range. A lot of, some people are asking, hey, are you just bringing younger whiskeys? We've actually just gone older mm -hmm. whiskeys and younger whiskeys in all directions. So I think something I thought was really based on the cast uh, would be a bit, bit more unique, regardless of age. And so it just turned out that way. What do you think? The smoked element, you know, I you know, call it smoked salt, but I mean, that's an island whiskey, but the, the smoked element is delicate. It's definitely there. It reminds me of a lot of it, like an older, well, so for older Isla whiskey, mm -hmm. smoke will, will mellow. And so yeah, it it. sort of integrates well and. Yeah, this is, but this is 11 years old. So it has like on the surface, by the, just based on the aroma alone, I, I would have guessed it was an older Isla whiskey. Older, older meaning 20 plus years. Sure. Um, I can see that. We, we bought a lot of those. And so I'm pretty used to those. Then you get in it, it, it is very aggressive. It's very, it's still a young, wild, untamed Isla whiskey. It is, it is very salty. Very salty. Oh, it is. It's salty in the last one, the last one was salty. Yeah, the oily and coastal one. Yeah. So I think in general, because to, to Slurk 53, there are a lot of fans out there, mm -hmm. um, just a lot of whiskey overall. And even putting out quite a few of these casts and people seem to love them. This is different than the ones we've had out because it is the peat smoke has been dialed back. Well, to your point of that, the, the other salty one we had, yeah. for, not from Island, the other Island one, mm -hmm. um, brings it out of that coastal spirit. You, you can kind of scale back that peat smoke itself. It bring, brings out that true character of the spirit, the prettiness as well. Oh, and that brine is, is really, I'm still tasting it. Mm -hmm. oh. One of 292. From this house, 58.4%. Uh, just meaty, you know, it tastes like a meal. It is, it is meaty. I mean, I think it's complement, you know, food well, I think, though. Like bacon? Bacon. Like what else? Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to go smoke on smoke. Yeah. You could definitely do that pairing. I think sometimes contrast is more interesting. Maybe like bacon, like on a pizza, like a white pizza with like bacon. So that sounds okay. That sounds really good, actually. Something with like smoked mozzarella on it. So, yeah. So bacon on a pizza and this Isla was maybe pizza. like maybe like a you know, like a clam bacon pizza. This would be really good. Okay. That's why you're here. Yeah. Right. That's why you're here. 
I miss the whiskey guy. I mean, you, you are the whiskey uh, and food guy. You are the you are the true yeah artisan here. Uh, a couple things. So Jesse, any brandy finish in this Christmas afternoon? I don't believe so, Jesse. There are a number of French oak finished whiskeys coming out this month. Um, one of which we tasted earlier, the delicatessen's and old libraries. Um, but none specific of brandy this month, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, do you know? So Tom R asked Ben, do you know if the SMWS has plans to get a cask from our know? You know, I don't know, Tom, to be honest, quite yet. It's it's a new distillery project. Um, we did just bottle a three-year-old whiskey from a, a different distillery that's near St. Ant Cruz, that's relatively new. So I can't say you know, for certain. It would be exciting. I think it's a great project that's, that's taking place on my level right now. Um, anyway. So that's that. Thoughts on the whiskeys? I should say we have one more mm. um, to taste. So it's good with a little water too. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. So last month, for those of you who tuned in and did this tasting, we did. We ended. This is like actually a blind tasting, but we ended with an Armagnac. And I presented this Armagnac. That's as, exciting. Not an Armagnac. Oh. I, just our guest had excellent samples, and I just. So it was a whiskey. I mean, I just you know, your samples, <laughs> and I really, I mean, he's just such a knowledgeable, you know, experienced whiskey drinker. But I had him guess really what sort of whiskey he thought it was. I mean, this is a space artist, this Ohio, and I didn't know. It turned out to be an Armagnac. And so I kind of want to make a point because I'm really an Armagnac recently, and I think a lot of whiskey drinkers are, are taking an interest in Armagnac. So last why do you think that is? Because of your so, influence, and you're just. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about like across, the, across the cast. I know you are. I, I appreciate the, uh, mm -hmm. I'm like dismissing any sort of uh, compliment right away, but that's not the case. Armagnac, I think in general, um, we were in an interesting era of with spirits consumption. I think people are just looking for unique, unique things. You, I mean, you know, yes. we, we see different perspectives on the same thing, right? Day to day. So, yeah, I, just, I think uniqueness, you know, definitely sells, especially for, you know, a niche audience like this. Yeah. So last month we had this A5.1, which is a beautiful 1989 Armagnac. I, I honestly can say right now, this is one of my favorite spirits that we have available, not including the entire afternoon that's coming tomorrow, but right now if you go on our site, I think at the very least, and this might hold up, is a beautiful one. And so for, for to, tonight, I brought up A4.1. So last month, again, if you guys were here and you saw that, I think I also did a separate live stream on Instagram about it. But beautiful 1989 Armagnac. This is a, for the interest of kind of getting into the category. If you're not familiar, um, the first one's priced at 275, which I think is great value for a 1989 Armagnac cast strength. But for something a little bit more approachable, if you're interested about Armagnac, I thought we'd go with something a bit more uh, palatable, if you will, not by flavor, but by, <laughs> but by budget. Quite frankly, so this is a 4.1. It's a 2002. Maybe it's a little more attainable. Yeah. So this. What's, is, what's the price on this? Yeah. One? So price, and let me pull this pull this one up too. Because this is around 140 is okay. what it was. We just released it. Actually, I'm sorry, guys. I misspoke. I thought it was 140. It's actually 120. So oh. we went from the 275 Armagnac, which I think is great value for what it is for the 89 vintage. Mm -hmm. But 84.1, 2002. Uh, this is from the Baco grape. So different grape entirely. Uh, another Bass Armagnac. And this is at 49.1%. So natural castering. What do you think? of What's your interest in Armagnac? And I guess if you want to share just... Probably your, your thoughts on brandy, I guess, relative to whiskey. Um, do you have you have an opinion? We haven't really talked about this. No, no, I haven't. I mean, I like. I mean, I think brandy is delicious. Um, you know, it has such a different flavor profile than whiskey, though. Um, they they tend to be you know so much more. I think softer, uh, a little more round. Um, obviously, you're not going to have any sort of smoky elements with Armagnac. They have a lot of uh, or, or brandy in general. Um, I feel like the a lot of the best ones have almost like like a walnut quality to them. Mm -hmm. So a bit about Armagnac. The floral. Yeah. What do you think of this one? Over. I mean, so big thing about Armagnac. I'll just say, guys, if you're, if you're a lot of people are familiar with cognac. Cognac is another type of French brandy. Armagnac is a region just south, essentially, of cognac. Um, both made from grapes, but beyond that, different grapes, especially with these two single cast Armagnacs here, uh, and the production process is entirely different. Armagnac is goes through a single distillation. Whereas cognac is double distilled, what that basically means is armagnac is more rustic. It retains more of the essence of the, the grape itself. Um, it's almost more whiskey-like. Yeah. Many malt whiskey is double you know, distilled and, and armagnac is single, but overall, I think the, the, the end result, it's more hearty, more more rustic, if you will. Perhaps more whiskey-like. I think I think generally, but I think you know maybe 
you know, some of the older stuff in Armagnac, I yeah. think maybe isn't as rustic. Yeah. Older stuff because mm -hmm. it's old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a 2002 vintage. Whoa. Older stuff because What's going on there? That was a random like repeat. That was bizarre. Sorry, guys. We just had a, a cell phone. Like, <laughs> Clip just go off. Wow. <laughs> it's spooky. It's witches night. <laughs> that was a joke because we had this list called witches night earlier. Okay, so thoughts on eight okay. four point one. Okay, what, what do you think of this? Back, I mean, back well, what do you think? Of, I mean, just if you had single cast, was cast strength on before? No, I mean, a previous to sitting in this room a little bit ago, I've never had cast strength on Yeah. So I think overall. Um, and I'll bring it back because because both of these are available. I mean, it's actually. it's pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah, a five point one. I think is you know, it's it's a time. It's timeless in, in, in essence. I think it's it's a beautiful Armagnac. If you enjoy Armagnac, I think you can't go wrong. I mean, it's sophisticated. Yeah, I think that's like that. I think that's probably like the, you know a really easy way to describe you know cognac or brandy is you know and when it's, it's when it's at its best, it's, you know, it's calm, cool, collected. Yeah, yeah, elegant. But, and I think and I would just I'm reading Elliot on the bottle and saying it. Oh, it's, 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 it's good. Yeah, but I, I would just it's put this up there. Armagnac, I think, has a little more funk. It's like the bad boy okay. brandy yeah. that's just, versus cognac. I think is known for being a bit lighter and more elegant, even though it's called elegant lighting. I'm just gonna throw that up. That's a, that's an, it's an opinion, everybody. Um, I think this is a great introductory point into the world of single cask Armagnac, a four point one. So cool. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of that. There's, there's not a lot of single cast Armagnac out there in general. So Jesse says, my local whiskey shop proprietor hates you. All of my discretionary whiskey dollars have been going to SMWF. Okay, Jesse, well, my interest is not taking your money. It's just providing you with good whiskey. I am sorry. If your local whiskey shop proprietor wants to become a member of the Scotland Whiskey Society, he can also share in your joy and, uh, and hang out with us as well. So. Price on the A4.1, 120, 120 for this one, yeah. Yeah, so great introductory into, again, it's for, for an Armagnac, I think relative to Cognac, it's much more affordable too, which is why I think it's pretty exciting. Quality isn't any less, but it's just lesser known. Yeah, I mean, I think if you are someone who's into Cognac and, you know, and, and likes it or looking for someone to buy a gift for someone who's into Cognac and they're open, they're just maybe they like spirits in general, I think that's a really yeah. great option because they're going to taste something that you really can't get elsewhere, a single cask. You know, Armagnac at cast strength. So let's do this. We're coming up an hour mark, guys. Gary, of everything we've tasted tonight. So yeah. What, what, can I share it? Share with your just inclusive thoughts on just what you liked, what you you can say what you didn't like if you didn't like anything, but just. Well, I think it was a really good progression. You know, um, if I was going to pick, you know, things I probably enjoyed, it was probably number four. That, that coastal and oily was just like. Unexpected. I wasn't saying it was, I wasn't expecting something delicious because yeah. um, so many delicious are very delicious, but that really took my socks off. And I, I didn't, I didn't expect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say, but also that, um, that French wine barrel finish on the, was it, yeah, we're on the same page. was it the witch's night? Is that the third one? Well, that was, that was the old space side one was the PX finish. Yes. French wine was oh, the, the delicate distance. Yeah. That, yeah. that was the second one. Um, also, very 77.47, nice. which is quite interesting. Um, delicate distance in old libraries, French oak finished. Wow. So, I mean, I think all of them were great. The first one was the sheer, the, and again, if you guys look below in the description, I've listed them in order that we tasted them. The, the, first, the first one was the, yeah. uh, the first full sherry butt, which mm -hmm. is very different from your typical sherry butt. It's much lighter in construct and in flavor and color and everything about it. Then we went to the French oak. Finished delicatessens in a libraries, which is just I thought just full of surprises. Yeah. Then the witch's night, especially is, for something at ten years old. At 10 years you old. know, you know, you don't expect necessarily that type of complexity. Yeah. yeah. Um, at that age. And then nine one five five, which is night, which is the old. This is the old mature classic in the sense that it's got a lot of complexity because it has been double matured mm -hmm. in American oak and then PF sherry, but classic can't go wrong. If you're looking mm -hmm. for something special, just just have a dram. And feel, I don't know, let's just celebrate something. Oh, a hard earned, a hard earned draft after a long day. This is a good one right there. Um, and then we went with yours, lunch and call it yours, lunch of the okay, Yeah, I, I also love this. I, one. Yeah, I think we both. If I, if I had to pick one, which it, yeah. you know, it's, it's a little arbitrary, but I, yeah. think, I think I would go with this. Yeah. yeah, this for me is more of it's funny, it's 
kind of in December. This is more like a, a September, October for Chicago. Like it's more of a fall. Yeah. But, was, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I can see that. I mean, you know, I think, you know, the, the witch is nice, probably more you think of like a cold yeah. weather yeah. Um, whiskey, but you know, some of it's just based on mood too, you know, like. Yeah. We had the classic Isla 53.250 smoked salt orange peel. Which is not everyone's crazy. December is cold like here, so I know, I know. Well, I just I was just in California earlier today. I'm thinking it was in the 60s in Southern California. I'm thinking like this is a perfect time for you know 42.36 lunch at the lighthouse. Um, so that's that. Yeah. So guys, so thanks to everybody who tuned in. It's always it's been great doing this every month, and I know like yeah. a lot of messages after we do this every time from people kind of sharing their thoughts. Um, if you do get these whiskeys, by all means, please message me. Email is ben at smwsa.com. You always get reach me through Instagram and single multi lines. How can they reach you, Gary? Um, you can reach you Instagram as well at, at Gary Lee Matthews. Gary Lee Matthews. Yes. Gary is now becoming super active on Instagram, so <laughs> you'll only see amazing content moving forward. Um, you put the pressure on now. Yeah, I'm putting the pressure on. I've, I mean, I've only heard this twice. At, like you're now this, this <laughs> the rising star of Instagram. So um, well, I'll just keep posting stories of you, and that's that's. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. awkward. Okay, you're gonna lose followers. But, <laughs> so guys, yeah, but more importantly, if you're in Chicago, obviously hit me up. But you also need to go see Gary at Trumbar. Trumbar's a fantastic awesome. place. It's a beautiful venue. It's just an experience, and I think it's really cool because you have a crazy selection of whiskeys that it's almost unheard of. Getting there, it's it's kind of off the path because it's pretty close to Michigan Avenue. Two blocks from Michigan Avenue. But it's right behind like, the John Hancock. You got the elevator. It's very quaint, and you get up there and you say, "Wait a second, what? Where did all this whiskey come from?" And if you remember. Um, of the Scotland Whiskey Society, you get 10% off um, all those selections. Oh, so yeah. So if you want awesome. Society Whiskey at Drum Bar, you can get 10% off. So cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Tune in. If you have any questions, let us know. Always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.